All right, it's Western Derby 59. I personally can't wait, and I've got my good friend Druzy to help me preview this fartathon between the West Coast Eagles and Fremantle. Druzy, your boys are flying at the moment. So, what do you make of Fremantle at the moment? I feel like we've just entered uh, the Premiership window. If I'm being honest with you, Jesse, like we're in the top four. Um, I don't think we're going to win the flag this year, but it's very exciting times. Our uh, midfield is one of the best in the competition. Our forward line's finally working. Uh, we're a strong defensive side, although that hasn't been one of our strong suits in the last sort of month of the season. But, you know, we've beaten Sydney this year. We've beaten Brisbane. We've beaten the Dogs at home. All these up-and-coming exciting sides. Um, we've got a pretty tough end to the season, but I'm feeling good. Must be nice. Must be nice. All of that disgusted me and made me immediately regret doing this preview with you because by contrast, the West Coast Eagles are polar opposite at the moment. Rock bottom in terms of form side of the competition. Easily the worst team in the comp right now. And it's just crazy to think what's happened since the last derby. I thought we'd spend a good 80% of this video really unpacking the first derby of this season to really try and identify what might happen in this derby. What do you reckon? The, the funny thing is like coming off the last derby, like we just had like two really tough road trips. Like we were in Adelaide for two oh, weeks. No. We, we played Carlton, we played Port Adelaide. Sleepy. No, I wasn't sleepy. I think it was just like, we just had two absolute wars and then we were just like sort of sitting ducks. Like you guys needed to get a win at some point if you're not going to get up for your home derby. So I don't know, Harley Reid's first derby, all that. Um, I don't want to get into quack, the prediction. <laughs> I know you probably don't want to get into the prediction straight away, but I, I think we could win this one by 75 plus. Oh, yeah. Interesting, because I think you said that last time, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> is that the best you've got? <laughs> it is the best I've got. Of course, it's the best I've got. Oh, mate, this derby is giving me... I'm, I'm really trying not to lose the game in advance, and I just keep thinking about this game, and my brain immediately wants to think about something else. Like, I'm, I'm at peace with where West Coast are at, sort of, in the sense that, you know, okay, things are shit right now, but we're in a rebuilding phase, and we are going to use the last five weeks to learn a little bit more and get more experience into certain guys. But I just wish it wasn't a Western Derby. And <laughs> no matter what way you slice it, like it's hard to tolerate bad losses. I'm emotionally prepared to lose this game, but I just don't want it to turn out like the the second Derby of last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, it's the second Derby of this year, and we're going to be better. But I think like it's not going to be as bad because you've already got one over us this year. Like you've already got that win, so like we sort of just got to get mm. one back. Like. I think us losing to you earlier in the year is going to be way more embarrassing than anything you cop on uh, on Saturday night. No, it's not. It's not like I don't know. We've got to play the game yet, but um, no, nah, we're we're humming at the moment, and you guys are absolutely not. Where did it all go wrong, Jesse? Because last time we played you, you were playing good. Harley Reid, yo, Tim Kelly out of the midfield looking all good. Jake Waterman taking contested marks. You know, you got Jeremy McGovern down there. Tommy Barras, Brady Hoff's playing good footy this year. Um, the list goes on, man. Like, where where did it all go wrong? So I actually don't think you guys have that bad of a list uh, in terms of the spine. And I think you guys have played some good footy this year. Yeah, I do kind of agree. Like, I mean, I think... There's so much simplistic analysis of West Coast at the moment because they're so shit and it's so easy to, um, you know, pick apart everything they've done wrong. But I mean, like in 2021, our list wasn't bad. And yes, like we fell away inexplicably. Um, we were eight and five at the bye and then turned to pretty much a team resembling what we are now at the midpoint of that season. And then equally this year, you know, 10 rounds in with three wins, seven losses, and we've beaten two sides that could play finals this year in Fremantle and Melbourne and also looked really good doing it. And then out of nowhere, we fall away again. So, mm. you know, I think the, the list criticisms, okay, it's not a great list, but, you know, it's, I, I did an analysis this week on True Eagle comparing where we were in 2011 to where we are now. And we had a similar amount of players in their prime playing well, or at least veterans. Mm. We still have Oscar Allen playing decently well, considering he's underdone. Jake Waterman, Tom Barras, McGovern, these guys are all having outstanding seasons, but the team really horrendously sucks. If I had to put a finger on it to come back to the question, why are we falling away so hard? I think we've built a style around, you know, playing front half footy, winning the contest, winning contested ball. And when we do that, we're really good. And I think we beat Fremantle in contested ball the last time we met, even though we lost the clearances. We were able to play that style, but it's almost as though it relies on us being at our absolute best 
mindset wise to be competitive mm. in games and then when we do click we're really good alternatively perhaps we're found out a little bit you know 10 rounds in P- P- teams are looking at what west coast do well and if you shut down that one aspect of west coast beating them in contested ball then you shut down the entire team and i think mentally the team's looking a little bit weak that is music to my <laughs> ears now i'll ask you about how good Frio are yeah well i've got some stats but yeah why don't you just Go for it, brother. We've, we're just clicking in really every line at the moment. Like, I'm watching other teams around the league. And one thing we do really well is... Well, we're doing a, a few things well, but let's go to the back line. Like, the way that we can deal with the ball coming in is so... Like, I feel calm when the ball hits the deck in Frio's back 50. Like we've got uh, Brandon Walker and uh, Corey Wagner, our smalls down there. Probably not the two best examples to start with, but, like, Luke Ryan's having a great year. Pierce, before he got injured... Had, had like an all Australian caliber year. Josh Draper we've unearthed has been magnificent. Uh, Brennan Cox, Geordie Clark um, is playing career best footy as well. Um, and just the camaraderie down there, uh, the method to get it out of our back half, it's it's comforting knowing that we're not just going to like completely butcher the footy every time um, the ball's in our defensive 50 and we can relieve that pressure. In the midfield, like the synergy between Sarong, Brayshaw, Young, and Fife is just so nice to watch like they sort of seem to know where the other's going to be at the moment um their ability to remain composed in traffic um maybe draw a like opposition midfielder and create space for the other one um is really good so our stoppage work um winning the clearance is we've got the best clearance differential in the league and then what we're now doing which is translating to our offense is getting the ball from the stoppage to the outside getting it into the hands of guys like Hayden Young, um, Sam Switkowski, Michael Frederick, um, to use that pace and sort of counterattack, I suppose, from the stoppages. And then, like, we've got Josh Tracy, who's come out of nowhere for a lot of people, but we've loved JT over the years. Um, such a physical guy. He brings third, fourth efforts, fearless uh, attack at the footy. Jai Amos is our deepest lying forward that just has really high IQ. Sam Sturt's playing career best footy. Walters kicked four goals on the weekend. Uh, and yes, yeah, Kelsey's one of the best pressure forwards in the comp. Not to mention our rucks, like Sean Darcy and Luke Jackson. People said that wasn't going to work. Um, Sean Darcy's impact statistically has been like night and day, the form of Freo when we have him in versus when we don't have him in. And then you've got to worry about Luke Jackson going in as a second ruck who, where most teams will play like a, you know, I don't know what, who West Coast second ruck is. It might be like a Jack Williams or for the D's on the weekend, it was Jacob Van Royen and they just got exposed. They just couldn't keep up with it. So yeah, things are going well. The method is looking good. Yeah, just to double down on some of those stats and how well Fremantle is going, they're they're top five in contested ball, we're 17th. They're number four in uncontested ball, and we're 18th. So this, as a side note, like I think that's West Coast's big issue is controlling the footy on the outside. So we're very contest-oriented. As soon as the ball exits the, the contest or the stoppage, we are useless. And what's symptomatic of that is you look at the guys on the wing selected for us every week and the possession counts are really, really damn low. So I think that's one way Freeman can really expose them. Uh, number eight in inside 50s, number three in ground ball gets. Mm-hmm. Um, the number one team by far is Hawthorne. Number one clearance side, this is Freeman. And they're triple the second best team, which I think off the memory off memory was the Western Bulldogs. Top four for both scores from stoppage and turnover. Number three for scores from the back half. Um, and I think overall they're ranked sixth for attack and number two for defense. So, I mean, comparing the two teams right now is like chalk and cheese. Um, so that's not even so much about this preview, but it's just a, a real... Um, indicator of how well Fremantle are going at the moment. And I hate to say it, but I think you're right about the premiership window. Mm. I think um, I think Hayden Young's move to the midfield has really added a different dimension to what was already a good midfield. And then the two rucks clicking. Yeah. And that makes me nervous as well because West Coast are by far lowest in the league for hitouts to advantage. Um, we went into the year a bit light. You know, Flynn got injured at the start of the year and Bailey Williams, I think, has gone backwards as a player this year. Um, this game, Flynn might be back. I think they could rush him back to be able to deal with Sean Darcy. I don't think we'd trust Bailey Williams at the moment. So all of that is a big recipe for disaster here. What we really need to do is be able to smash you in the contest to even make this close. And I'm not feeling <laughs> very good about <laughs> well, that we're not, right now. We're not going to let what happened last time happen again. Harley Reid isn't getting off the chain. And I think the Freo fans will give him a fair bit of stick all day every time he gets on the ball because it's a Freo home game. We're pretty passionate fans. Um, 
Hayden Young, you mentioned, um, at the moment is the second highest rated player in the comp in the last like five weeks of footy. Mm-hmm. Only Paddy Cripps is rated higher than him. Um, people don't realise how good Frio have actually played this year because they think back to results like the Derby or the Bulldogs loss and just forget about all the footy that we've played throughout the season. Like We're the first team to beat Sydney this year. We beat Brisbane earlier on. I've said the results that we've had. Living in Melbourne and telling people you're a Frio fan, they're like, oh, how are Frio doing this season? I'm like, yeah, we're top four. And it takes them by surprise. They're like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, I'm, like, I thought Richmond were good. It's like, nah, bro, that was like three years ago but <laughs> um so it is quite frustrating but Hayden Young um yeah I've said all season that he is Bontempelli-esque like not maybe as much of, of an accumulator but in terms of once he's out of congestion how damaging he is with the footy and now he's learning to hit the scoreboard get forward and yeah create goals or goal assists like he's played midfield for what four months of his career and we're already seeing his trajectory just massively skyrocket um so yeah i just think our method right now is 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 dan fine our midfielders win the ball if we don't win the ball we've got sam switkowski and frederick applying pressure on the forward line geordie clark heath chapman coming in off half back um and then we got jago amira really experienced player he's playing really high level footy at the moment and jeremy sharp so like i don't know all of our players know their role and they're executing at a high quality right now. Um, and yeah, I think we're going to play a prelim and hopefully pump your mob on the weekend. Love it, love it. Uh, before we get to our predictions, um, why don't you? What's the selection looking like at Fremantle this week? Any injuries? Obviously, Alex Pierce. You mentioned anyone meant to come back? Yeah, Alex Pierce. That was annoying. We didn't need to bring him back against uh, the D's. Josh Draper's had a massive year last. Uh, this year um so he'll come straight back in i think bit of a michael johnson type wears 37 athletic um he's growing in confidence every game um so he'll come straight back in i would assume i think that's it i think we're gonna probably try to keep the team continuity as best as we can maybe johnson comes in as a sub i'm not sure but there's not gonna be any wholesale change jl likes to keep the team fairly uh, consistent I suppose for West Coast we've got a bit going on um, last week we actually were the first for the first time we were the youngest team in the competition for like that's the first time that's been the case for like 15 years I reckon um, and that was because we had Waterman Yo Gov Duggan all injured to different extents so we got three fitness tests we hope Gov might come back Yo might come back Waterman might come back but they're all maybes at this point Liam yeah. Duggan is definitely not going to be back um, and there is a chance like I said Matthew Flynn might be selected on the basis of Darcy and Jackson being probably a fair bit too much for young Bailey Williams and Jack Williams. So I wouldn't be surprised if we if we bring Flynn back in. And thankfully, those are pretty good ins. And I shudder to think what will happen if all three of them miss. Yeah, I was um, going to say. Would... It's like, well, there it goes. Oh, you're good players. <laughs> I know. And, and, you know, Yo won the medal last time and Waterman kicked five. And uh, McGovern's been close to all Australian yeah. quality this year, I'd say. So... Yeah, that's a big if for us. Um, and I guess I guess we'll get your prediction now. Now, if you can just look straight at the camera, make sure you're centered because if you get this wrong, I am going to clip it and put it all over social media. So give us your prediction for this game. Uh, Frio, how much did you lose by to the St. Kilda? 72. Oh. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon Frio win by 55 plus. Well, but bearing in mind, we did miss those three or four players that I just mentioned. Um, which are important. They're actually playing well. It's not like, you know, it's a veteran who has been shit all year that's out. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think we could lift the occasion away crowd. I think we could make it a bit of a hard slog for you, best case scenario. But I, I can't see it being closer to set than seven goals. So I'd say Fremantle by like 44 points. Yeah. Uh, medal. Um, who's... Oh. God, it could just be, uh, it'll just be one of the midfielders. It'd be Sarong, Brayshaw, or Young. Probably, let's go with Young just because he's damaging. He hasn't won it. I don't think he's won it before. Um, so let's go Hayden Young. No, he wouldn't have. Yeah, okay. If you go Young, I'll go Bray. Uh, you know, Brayshaw. Brayshaw's playing real well at the moment. Yeah, um, he is. I'll go Brayshaw, actually, just to throw a different one out there. Yeah, Sarong. Um, sorry, Eagles fans, if you were watching <laughs> this and hoping that I was going to give a bit of a better preview. My confidence at West Coast is very low at the moment. I just, like, I don't know. You've got exciting, uh, well, not exciting years to come in the rebuild, but it is a fun process. Like, Freo have only now just got to the point where we're seeing the fruits of the rebuild with Brayshaw, Sarong, Young, um, Amos, 
Um, we picked up, you know, Frederick and Tracy along the way there, Chapman. Um, so it is a it is a rewarding process, as you know, like you guys have done it better than we have in the past yeah. to lead to success. But like Jinby, Elijah Hewitt, Reed, um, Brady Hoff's playing pretty good footy at times this year. Um, Jack Williams has a bit of upside. Um, so yeah, you're just getting started now. Like this is the, also the first derby without Adam Simpson in like a decade, right? So if not longer, yeah, so, yeah. Um, since 2013. All, all respect to West Coast, you know, you're a good club. We do hate each other, but um, yeah, I'm keen to smack you about on Saturday, and we will be live streaming, won't we, Jesse? Yeah, we briefly talked about the possibility of us live streaming simultaneously on both of our channels and talking to each other on camera. So. This is going to be so painful, <laughs> but I'm going to commit to it. So, um, yeah, tune in to the True Footy or the Druzy live stream. If you're a Fremantle fan, go to Druzy's. If you're a West Coast <laughs> fan, you can come, come join us. Um, either way, you're going to be seeing the same thing. So, looking forward to it in opposite land. And, uh, Druz, thank you for previewing this game for me. Uh, anything you want to plug? Um, the Athlete Academy is back. Uh, I've been back working in the fitness industry. True Footy 20 is still running. So if you're wanting to get fit and firing for footy, uh, I'm working in the VFL at the moment, um, learning some good stuff. So I'll plug that. <laughs> oh man, I've been smashing the gym lately. I've got, I'm on a calorie deficit of 500 calories a day. I've been going to the gym twice a day. I've been a fucking athlete, bro. Good for you, man. And if you had an effective program from Drewsy's Athlete Academy, you'd be making even more progress. Maybe I'll have to sort you out with one. Thanks, mate. I do have a gym crush at the moment who has no idea that I exist. So perhaps if I keep leering at her from the shadows, she'll eventually <laughs> love me. <laughs> I have no idea how much of this is going to stay in. Thanks for watching, guys. Let us know in the comments your predictions for the Derby or don't. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> All right. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Let us know in the comments your predictions for the Derby. Cannot wait to read those and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Come on, Frio! Woo!